Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.39. Before we begin the meeting uh, tonight, I'd like to ask everyone if you would please uh, join me in a moment of silence. On April 30th, the North Reading Public Schools community, actually the community of North Reading as, as, as a whole, uh, lost a beloved educator named Charlie Jones. Mr. Jones was a teacher of social studies and an administrator at North Reading Middle School for nearly 40 years. He passed away after a very brief illness. And his, his legacy, I know, will live on for many, many years. In fact, those of you who may either have students at the middle school or when you do come to North Reading Middle School, uh, it was not long ago that the uh, connecting corridor in North Reading Middle School was named um, in his economy. He was a wonderful man, a very talented and gifted educator, and I'd like to ask you all to please join me in a moment of silence in his name. Thank you. At this time, uh, as superintendent, I will uh, ask for nominations for chairman of the North Reading School. I'd like to nominate Scott Buckley for the chair. Cipriano has nominated Mr. Buckley for chair. Are there additional nominations? Okay, at this time, I will entertain a motion to yeah, uh, appoint Mr. Buckley, chairman of the North Reading School. I would like to there is a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Buckley, congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. So, I think we'll defer the subcommittee, but why don't we try to reorganize the other position? So, we need a do we have any nominations for the vice chair this year? I would like to nominate myself as vice chair. No. Other nominations for vice chair? Okay. We have a motion to have Janine be the vice chairman. I'll move that we vote for Janine as vice chairman. A motion. Second. Hi, Chris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Now, secretary. The nomination for secretary. I nominate Mr. Chris Papabaski. Good, folks. All right. <laughs> As secretary, it's normally kind of like a tradition that the new kid on the block gets the secretary position because there's so much that you have to do. <laughs> okay. Any other nomination? Any hearing none? Make a motion. Make a motion to nominate Chris Papa Basilio. Basilio. There you go. Yay. <laughs> As secretary of the Post Committee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. One more. The legislative representative. Nomination for the legislative representative. Notable Athletic Matters. So over the weekend, 
girls track had several um, athletes qualified for nationals. In the shuttle hurdle event, we had Ali Grasso, Kate Courtney, as well as Brent and Megan Waller all qualified. Um, Ali Grasso also qualified for the triple jump, and Lindsay McCauley qualified in the steeplechase. The steeplechase is like a 3K with hurdles, and one of the hurdles is smooth water. So it's not usually a normal event that happens. Girls softball has also been having an amazing season with 10 wins and only one loss. And girls track last Wednesday became two champions, going undefeated all season. Most of the other sports teams have been having a growing season due to the fact that um, they lost many seniors last year. Moving on to academics, it's been quite a stressful last two weeks for many students because AP testing has been going on. It started last Monday with AP government and will end on Friday with AC Computer Science. 70 new National Honor Society members were also inducted into the society on May 9th, meeting their requirements for a 3-5 GPA. And student recognition night will be Thursday, May 24th, and many students will be awarded for their academic endeavors throughout the year. And as graduation is coming up, the list of the 2019 honor graduates has been posted. Any student who maintained a average of 85% or higher for the majority of their high school career were eligible to receive academic honors. We also have a lot going on lately with fine arts. Um, there has been a senior art show displayed on Main Street showcasing many of the seniors' work. Work projects that includes Casey Robarts, Chloe Kobelis, Laura Wagner, Natalia Roll, and Kat Capone. Um, Notorious participated in a cappella in a day over the weekend, and they did this at Wakefield High School. My friend Sam, who's on Notorious, made sure to tell me all about it. He said everyone in the group loves the event so much because we get to meet students who do a cappella from all over and they just get to sing all day and improve their skills together and share their love of acapella with one another. Masters will also be holding nominations for elections next year, and the high school spring concert is May 22nd at 7 p.m. That includes performances from pretty much every group in the high school, the marching band, the chorus, the jazz band, and the tourists. Um, last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, and the theme for the week was Teaching in the Wild. Student council members worked really hard to thank the teachers for all their hard work. Lizzie Barrett was one of the leaders of that charge. Um, the school's student leadership and mentoring program chose new members for next year and elected board members, and we will be holding our core training sessions with Deb and Dana on May 27th and 28th. These are always really constructive, and everyone kind of comes back to school having learned a lot about themselves and how they can be better leaders for next year. Um, elections for next year's student council members and class officers are also coming up. Um, they're starting on the 15th, and then in the consecutive days after that, we start with senior class, go to junior class, and then go to the sophomore class. Um, the health teachers, Ms. Whitney and Mr. Costello, have been working to create a youth action team to promote healthy behaviors both within North Bend High School and just in the greater community as a whole. And we've also, many of the clubs have been doing a lot of charity work with book club, holding a book drive, collecting over 500 books for various charities such as Books for Africa, Rosie's Place, and Wolverine Prisons. And Eco Team also collected lightly used shoes for a company which plants trees for every pair of shoes collected and then also donates those shoes. For the student report today, I chose to bring in, or the student piece of work, I chose to bring in an essay that I did for my AP English class. As exams have been coming up, our teacher decided every class she'd give us the time writings and the time to multiple choice so we'd be really prepared for the exam. And this was the synthesis essay, so basically we get seven documents and an argument and we either have to agree, disagree, or modify the argument. And the topic for this specific synthesis essay was whether or not plastic bags should be banned in our own community. And I thought this topic was really interesting 
because the question directly asked about our specific community. So not only do we have to think about the problem, but we had to think about how it applied to North Reading. And I thought it was really interesting to not only argue for ourselves, but for the town. Questions? Do you remember being this this age? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so which is better, being young or being like? They're both good for different reasons. Yes. <laughs> Very difficult.
Bobby Costello and Ella Darling. Nice job. Very nice job. Good evening. Welcome, Superintendent Bernard, Mr. Conley, Principal Molly, School Committee, parents, teachers, and friends. Since Memorial Day is soon approaching, we thought we would use it as a presentation theme. We will begin our portion of the program by explaining the significance of Memorial Day and America's White Table, followed by a National Monument presentation. Memorial Day is always the last Monday in May. It is not just a day off from work or school. Memorial Day is a day to remember those who have died, even though those who have died while serving in the military. Many of the celebrations on Memorial Day include the military. For example, the Air Force may fly special planes and jets for everyone to see. The Navy may also let people explore the inside of old battleships. Other military groups may hold drills to show how they do some of their tasks, like saving people from a burning ship. Another way to celebrate Memorial Day is to fly the American flag at half staff of sky instead of flying it all the way to the top of the flagpole. The flag is raised only halfway. Take a look at the flags at the police or fire stations. Many are raised at half staff on Memorial Day. At Washington, D.C., people have many events to celebrate Memorial Day. Arlington National Cemetery is a place where Union soldiers were buried in the Civil War. Since then, soldiers from other wars have been buried in the Arlington National Cemetery. On Memorial Day, thousands of soldiers place a small flag on each grave. The President of the United States will also place flowers at the Tomb of the Unknowns. The Tomb of the Unknowns is a place to honor those who have died, even though we don't know the soldiers' names. So one symbol of Memorial Day has long been the red poppy, and it comes from the poem in Flanders Fields written by Molina Michael. So the poem is included, I'm not going to read it for you, but it's included on your little brochure that you have here. We do have a copy for you, each of you. Please feel free to wear them proudly on Memorial Day as a symbol of remembrance. Thank <laughs> you. 
With the last toast, you do the last toast. To remember. To remember. Until they come home. We just tour and always bring the water and come back of the ever appeared at your table. Good job, Ian. Damaged by an earthquake on August 23, 2011. 
The monument was closed. There were minor injuries, but thankfully everyone got up soon.
doing that. I think we just met once or twice last year just to kind of talk about you know, before the original budget was presented. You're talking about which? The budget one that we did, we just met with John before. I mean.
and the chair and vice chair of the finance committee. Ten, ten people? About oh, small. That sounds okay. good. Ten people. Um, and again, just looking, book tracking, expenses, revenues. We, we need a lot. Beginning of the month, at the end, there was one week we met four or five times. We need a lot. We need a lot for winter. So the CIPC, Diana's on, that was a three-year appointment last year. So just to kind of note that she's on that one still with my phone. Um, so that gives Diana four. And then Substance Abuse Coalition. Do we have an appointment for the end of the year, or who's on that right now? I am. What does that mean? And it means around 10 o'clock. That's a possible one? Yeah. It's a certain Tuesday of the month. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm thinking of the subcommittee part of it too. But yeah, it's usually 10 o'clock in the police department. Yeah, like 3rd or 2nd or 4th or 2nd. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be hard for Chris then. It would be hard to teach it, yes. Um, if you want to stay on it, then that's all right. 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 Special Education Parent Advisory Council we created that this year. Um, I was the liaison. I've been going to the meetings. I, I don't care. I mean, I will plan on going either way as a, as a parent, but um, I'm happy to stay on as the liaison to the CPAP. I don't want to have too many community members there anyways, but yeah, I'm happy to be there. So, so that would give all of us four with the exception of Chris and then we have, we also were, we're going to talk about the um, the search committee as well. We should probably do that at this point in time as well. Sure. Okay. Yeah, on the issue of the of the balance of yeah, we have a lot of these, well, not a lot, but many of these are during the time period. During, during the day, yeah, I can do it. Um, Finance should be doable, but Rich started informing you and said specifically that you're interested in that. That's so, what I'm exactly. Exactly. The last thing I want to do is try to that question. If you feel overextended with four or plus church committee, you yeah, know, I feel about that. I don't feel overextended, but I don't want to give you an opportunity to participate in the thing. Yeah. So, so wait, so what are we, what are we discussing here now? Sorry, I was, um, this way. I was just saying that um, uh, I could do the fine art schedule wise, but that was something that Richard was explicitly passionate about. Yeah, great. Um, uh, uh, and I was saying, he says he's not overextended, but if he were, then we're both in students from the search committee. That might be under, I don't know, if we find some things to schedule, but also putting uh, into uh, positive views. Oh, I mean, again, we, we, let's, well, I mean, let's talk about it. I mean, we, we talked in the, in the workshop about it a little bit. I mean, I still think, again, I, I if three people are interested, I mean, I think Janine should be on, I think Janine should share it. She's been here the longest. She's run the, the evaluation the last however many years. So I think that's a good position for her. I would defer to Rich just because the process had begun a little bit at some of the past meetings that, you know, Rich has attended. Again, I mean, it's everybody's call here, but the, I mean, the other thing is to even it out. There are other positions if you, I mean, we can go back and look at some of the other ones as well. Are there other things that don't meet? I mean, NORCAM was going to be rich. I mean, that's an evening one. I don't know if you wanted to do NORCAM or if you wanted to do... It would fit. Um, you know, I, if, as I said, separate this from the, uh, the thing that you most interested in the business schedule the best would be the search committee. Um, there are a couple other here that if people could meet them or it's just a matter of time to find things that fit if that works. I feel confident being able to catch up to what we have to get to say. I mean, I, I, I mean, again, it seems like we can, we can, we should take a vote on that. Why don't we take a vote on that one then? So, for the, for the, for the subcommittee, for the search committee, the uh, superintendent search committee. Well, that one would need to be a vote according to Mr. Teacher. I'll do the other yeah. approaches. It would be a vote either way. Yes. Yeah, he's saying yeah. we should appoint it either way to, uh, for that. And so, uh, for, well, why don't we do, one at one at a time. So for the chair, do you want to do? Oh, so sure. Nomination for the chair. And so I mean, 
I, I would, I mean, maybe you want to nominate someone for the chair. Nominate me. Okay. Second. I'll second. Okay. So, all in favor of Janine as the chair of the Superintendent Search Committee? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're unanimous. Okay. Yeah. And so then. I never saw that. <laughs> <laughs> For the second time, I mean, we don't need to have a vote. I'll, I'll leave it to Rich because I'll, I'll like you can defer. I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Rich, and now that we've decided, so kind of these, you can decide. There's no hard feelings. Okay. Okay. So, for yourself. okay. So we're gonna we're, we have to we have to establish it and make a vote either way. Okay. So um, so then we'll have a motion for the second school committee member on the subcommittee or the search committee for the superintendent. Any other nominations? Okay. Any other nominations? Okay. So, oh, we have a motion to. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Well, I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna. <laughs> that's a nomination. I'm gonna do a second or a motion. The second by Chris and uh, vote in favor. So, all in favor of Rich as the second member. Aye. Opposed. Thank you, Nancy. So that does give Rich and Janine both five subcommittees, and I do think it'd be good to try to find a role for Chris as well. But some other committees, I mean, is there anything, Janine or Rich, that you think would be something that we could possibly do? I, mean, I do want to make sure we include Chris. Come on, two of our things with Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah can't give those up, but uh, uh, yeah. so we got Norcam, we got the... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, it's also just how, about I, how about I take myself off the line? Fine parts. Would you be a, well, that was also a new one. Well, was that the middle of the day or was that the yeah, third? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that's where it is. Certainly in the first year. Yeah, yeah. that's definitely yeah. the I can comfortably do that. Yeah. And I think that will be a good one yeah. because that will, that will be a lot of a variety of people that it'd be good to meet some more, yeah. Yeah. more people. Like NORCAM, you're just meeting the NORCAM members. Right. The, again, great people, but at the end of the day, it's not a lot, it's, it's just one group. Fine arts are bringing together a few different people, and so I think that would be good. And if you're fine, well, can we do that? If you're fine, you can't make the meeting, just reach out to me and I'll step in. Sure, but that would be an extraordinary circumstance. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I was just trying to break you two up, but it seems like. No, <laughs> <laughs> and just for there you go. Chris, for your information, you, you typically what happens with the subcommittees that when I meet, we, we establish we meet the next meeting at a mutual convenient time. Right. So once we have the first organization, we, we will work to accommodate people's schedules. Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't, you know, the same with the policy. Oh. The policy subcommittee one is a pretty heavy one. That's that's a lot of meetings. And it's, a lot of it's also one of the more flexible ones. It is very flexible. It's, not tiny it's just the three of us. Oh, right. right. It's me and the two school chair members. So we can, we can certainly make that one work. Yeah. But just in terms of your, um, Expectations of like the workload that is a hefty one. Don't you think you agree? I mean, that's just in terms of the time. Yeah. I mean, the a lot of the work has been done. It wasn't, like you said, I think you met only like five times. You had nothing going on. Which one? The policy. Yeah. This year it's been rich, rich, and Diane and I. I think they're doing a pretty aggressive overhaul. Right. And I think the reason it was very light was because Cliff, the year before, had gone through. That's right. And, um, it was all like 2012, 13, yeah. and now we're kind of in that five-year right. cycle. And so we're, would you say we're close to halfway at this point? We're about halfway through Section G. Right? Yeah, we're, we're, we're more than halfway through the sections, but the heavier sections are, are still coming. So, yeah. so halfway is probably It's going. a good time to get off. <laughs> so you'll learn a lot. So, so it's really good. I, I found it very helpful. I think Diane probably did too. Yeah, that was awesome. It's a good one. It is. You will learn a lot. Oh, 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 right. so, 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 so to kind of recap that, so the policy subcommittee is Chris and Rich. Yep. The athletic subcommittee is Diana and Janine. The evaluation subcommittee is Chris and Rich. The budget finance subcommittee is myself and Diana. The contract review subcommittee is also Diana and myself. Uh, fine Arts Subcommittee is going to be Chris and Rich. NORCAM is Rich. 
finance planning team is Janine Scott. <laughs> uh, the Substance Abuse Coalition is Janine. The Spe uh, Special Education Parent Advisory Council liaison is Scott. And the Superintendent Search Committee is Janine Rich. Janine is the chair. And, and Diane's also still on CIPC, so that gives her four as well. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so that's the new business there. The next new business we have we did the presentation. We have a proposed summer meeting schedule. Bernard, you want to walk through? I'd be happy to, Mr. Chairman. So, as is, uh, I think it's fair to say, tradition, uh, the school committee will meet twice in the summer for uh, two purposes. One is to establish goals for the county school year and then to get back in the regular business that that might need to be conducted, um, which is, is pretty typical. There are the years when the school committee has not needed a second day for, uh, excuse me, for a goals workshop, um, but there are many years where it has been needed. So, if you look at your before uh, for tonight, the two dates that I propose are really the same, they're the same uh, weeks, I believe, as um, this past summer, maybe with the variation in July. Uh, but in any case, I'm proposing to meet those two meeting dates with a uh, workshop on um, the establishment of the goals to be held uh, prior to each of the regular meetings. And this, I'm, I'm offering them only to you as a, as a document. If they don't work for somebody, you can certainly change them. If they work for you, then you can lock those in. And if, just I would add, at the next meeting, um, June 30th, I will have for you the calendar of the proposed dates for the entire next year, so you have a best notice so and you have time to make changes to that. You might as well. So you'll get that in the next meeting. Right. Thank you very much. People have conflicts and listing dates for people have made them. So July 29th. First one would start at 4.30, and then we'd have a general a regular meeting at 6.30, and then the same on August 26th, if needed at 4.30, and then at 6.30. I, mean, I don't know what I'm doing this summer. I can pretty much take time when I want, so I can yeah. make it. it that works for me. July at White Oak. Late, late in the month. Yep. Yeah, I, I got the sense that they that they might, you know, they might want to have some decisions made before the start of the school year, and that would be a week. I can check it. Okay. okay, but if you can, we can do like a free third. And I also would like to mention, I'm not sure what's about this, but it's getting in before the end of this year, too. Right? Sure. If you want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll share it with that. Or July 29th. Or July 29th. Yeah. The first so for those that I typically work with you on, uh, uh, policy and such. I'll, I'll circulate some information to you guys in the next couple of days. It floats in days. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of going to what I'm going to be doing with, with that. We kind of set it up. Yep. And then maybe you might get a better sense of what works a lot for that. Yeah. Yeah. What did you can say that you're going to be doing. Okay. So don't need to talk about that. The next item is the superintendent search process. So. I just provide a quick update. So we had a workshop before this meeting where we spoke, and there's really three or four different issues that we need to decide, and we settled on some of them. The first was just the composition of the committee. So obviously tonight we voted that Janine will be the chair with Rich on it. Uh, we had a discussion about, well, first and foremost, I should say, we are very grateful that so many people have applied. We had, I think, more than 20 people Somewhere, in that, somewhere around that number that uh, expressed interest in me on the search committee. And it, it, it's very difficult because every single person, I think most of us knew who they were, they're people that are very involved in the community. And so it was you know, very fortunate that somebody who wanted to step up and help us with this uh, process. So from that, we had, you know, Ginny and I had originally recommended 11 names, but I think we decided to uh, we, we change a few of them a little bit. And I think we uh, are deciding to ask 12 people 
We're not going to name them yet because it's going to be an aggressive uh, uh, timetable. And so we want to make sure that the people that were, are interested that we think would be the right fit on the committee will have you know, the availability to serve uh, on that committee. So um, the chairwoman of the committee is going to reach out this week to those 12 people to see if they are available. And if they are available, then we will, you know, we have an orientation, we'll talk about the schedule in just a minute, but we'll see if that will be the committee, a, a committee of 14 if everyone's available. If one or two are not, we'll look at possibly asking some of the other people if they are available. So, in terms of the composition, I think we settled most of that at the workshop. Does everybody feel comfortable with, with the resolution there? I mean, it, it just, to, just to say, I mean, it's a very good mix of administrators, teachers, both in district and out of district, uh, past school committee members, community members, um, you know, town, and, town members, uh, teachers and staff, community. I don't think there's anybody, but there, there was a, a good number of people that expressed. Yeah, not yet staff, but just staff, um, not teaching staff members in North Reading. We were very fortunate. Other things to add, anything that I'm missing from the competition? I would just say that uh, I think the, the most the, the foremost consideration was making sure we had that full representation. Yeah. So we're, we're really slotting, choosing people just to make sure we've got someone from all the, from all the, the grade levels, the, the school levels. And, Checking all the boxes of teachers, non teaching staff, and administrators, and you know, so I think it came up with a pretty good list that people should feel confident that that was the primary consideration. Yeah, we have, we have parents at all of those teams at all levels. We have people that have been on search committees before, some that have not. You know, just note that Chris, you know, in his first meeting with us, jumped in right away to express, oh, maybe we need this as well. And so it was, it, it was welcome. So I think it's it's good, I, I like that this is a group that, amongst ourselves, we have very different backgrounds, which is, I think, a really, a nice benefit of the committee. I, you know, I'll just say right now, I'm really happy that Chris and Jeanine are with us. Um, Jeanine, it, it would be nice to have somebody that's not in their first term actually on the school committee, so we appreciate that. And then with Chris, I think, you know, having a teacher on the school committee is, I think it's great. And I, I think it's great to have you guys, and so welcome. So that was the first thing we talked about. We talked about the timetable, um, the schedule, and we don't do that. Not that. We're not going to go through it. We, we, had a, we looked at essentially a, a schedule similar to the last time we did the search. We made a few adjustments to it. Essentially, is it May? So I think on May 20th, we're going to have essentially an orientation and organizational meeting of the, of the subcommittee. So that will be the first time that the, that the search committee will meet. Um, from there, we'll, you know, we'll post the advert, we'll advertise right after that. We'll leave the position open for three weeks. Just a question, I mean, I, I, I think we had talked before about an external and internal search. Are we in agreement on that? Is there a discussion to be had about that? So we've talked, we've certainly talked in past meetings about um, I kind of went back and forth on this, but I, I do think an external search is appropriate to uh, to uh, pull in those the, the candidates that we can really prepare a message on. Chris, I agree with the logic of it. Um, that has quite the view of the industry. Yeah, we can get it going. Yeah, it's fair enough, but I'm not going to that sounds like the question. The, the Along the same line as Diana, I believe if you have a viable candidate or candidates within the district that knows the district, the administrators know them, and they all get on the work. It makes, it makes more sense to stay internal, but I understand also, you know, the the other side where you know throw it out. I don't think anybody 
everybody knows that there could be more than one. I think, I think we all know that there's at least one very good internal candidate, which, again, I mean, that could hinder the number of applicants we get. But I, I think it looks good both for the school committee and for the person that is selected. I think for us, the most important position that we, job that we have is to hire a candidate as superintendent. So I think that, especially with four of us in our first term, it would be, I think it would look good that we, you know, at least had our eyes open to anybody that was interested. And I actually think it would, even if an internal candidate is ultimately selected, I think it really helps that person that it wasn't just, we didn't do anything and just appointed the person. I personally think it helps that person, you know, you give them more of a mandate to rule them out. So that was my opinion. So it sounds like everyone's okay with posting externally. Or at least yeah, three of us are in. Or a phase approach? Well, I think the, my concern with the phase approach would be two things. Number one, the timing of it. Because if we're trying to do most of the work with the subcommittee before July 1st, I, I worry about that. And then the, the second thing was, it's hard to me to imagine how we're going to get to the point to say, well, I kind of like this person, but I don't know if it's enough to not post it externally. I think it'd be, I would prefer to just post it and see what we get. Oh, I didn't but, think it was really the observation. I just thought, like, if only one, one person apply, if one person apply, then obviously we open it up. I so think multiple people apply internally, and we felt like we wanted to do that due diligence before broadening this to external, that we could you know, take a moment to pause and visit that and make that decision. But that's just one alternative approach. Again, we're not going to stick with the candidate, but it's only one. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, that, that might be a good approach. I, again, I think it's the timing, though. Just, I mean, Where's the deadline come from? Does anybody know? Are we self imposing that deadline? Yes. I think, summer, I think the concern was just the summer, I guess, with trying to get the search committee with, you know, you have 14 people on it to coordinate times in July and August, which we wanted to extend it to, would be, I think, challenging for for a lot of people, and so I think, you know, I, we can take a vote on today. Ultimately, it's, we get to decide how to do it. I would be in favor of external. Did it do it? Well, just take a formal vote or a formal vote? Well, I, I just need to think about it. Go ahead. I'm in favor of having an external uh, approach from the beginning, which I'll talk about this in the um, the, the first would be that if the idea is when we do an internal search, and then if there was only one or not enough applicants, with that, I feel like that kind of sends a message of to the applicants, well, we're not so sure we're going to open up for more now. It kind of creates this feeling of, yeah. like, that's a very... Right, but right. Yeah, yeah, understandable, but also don't like to say, you know, I showed up and I wasn't good enough, so now I have to see if I can get this around. Right. Um, right. But then in addition to that, uh, if, uh, if we have an excellent internal candidate to choose from, having other potentially excellent candidates apply, doesn't hurt our odds of getting a raise. I also want to be a student. Right, that's the next step, that's the number one. Yeah. And if it's not going to fit the time, yeah. Again, we can, we can make it whatever, whatever, whatever it is, and more people, the timeline, they can't do that. But I think I'd be in favor of external. It sounds like Chris is in favor of external. One other person in favor of external. When you say external, you mean external. Internal and external. Okay. Yes. No, we're not going to consider anybody internal. Or external. Like, oh external and internal. Absolutely. Okay. Never, never uh, shut off. It's in fact, no. It would certainly be a, a, a great positive thing if yep. you end up hiring internal. Yeah. And so, okay. So now we have the timetable, and essentially June twentieth will be the orientation. From there, we will May. post or May twenty. Yeah. Sorry, May twenty. Um, I'm looking for the team here. And then from there, then we'll we'll make the posting. And I think we're going to leave it open for three weeks to get candidates and publish the timetable, time, timeline afterwards. And then to publish it. We'll make sure that the committee, people that are going to make the committee, are aware of the timeline. So. Yes. All the 20 of these? Right. Yes. Yeah. 
Here, here we got the end of time. The, just I want to try to give you a new rhyme. I'm just going to give you a new rhyme. Yeah, I, I think so. I'm going to make sure you have a space that's like the library. How is this going to say the media library should be more than enough? So like the library classroom? Yeah, the, the one who do the digital learning. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Okay, so you want to, you want to use that space yes. for what time? How much do we do it? Um, 6.30. I, I think some community members are probably going to be looking at the day, I think. I would think around 6. 6.30 is a lot of different time. Yeah, 6.30. Yeah, I would. Perhaps, would perhaps, perhaps when you reach out to everybody, you could also see the timing of it. What is the consensus if you say 6 or 7, maybe a few people say, I would say we're looking to meet at 6.30, does that work for you as opposed to yeah. what works for you? Correct. Yeah, I think that's a, a standard. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll, if there's a problem with that, I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you. If not, you can just assume. Well, so you get to meet the, yes. the, the chair of the ASA, I think you want to talk to her. You're not wanting to question you. I don't think you should be in the ASA. I don't you might, but I think so. I don't assume that. We, I, I, I get it. I totally I get it. But I, but it's, the room is bugged. <laughs> no, and, 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 and just to stay for the record, I mean, we appreciate that you are assisting us, you know, and like finding materials from the last time so that we don't have to recreate the wheel. We, we appreciate that. Um, so I think we have a lot of good people that are here. But, okay, so that's the time, the timeline of everything. We were starting to look at the posting before we ran out of time for the workshop. So do we want to, so do people have comments or questions or potential changes on the posting that we proposed? Scott, I believe you mentioned you had some policy. I have. Every time I see a policy, I have something. <laughs> so one on, on the first page, well, why don't we go page by page? Under qualifications, it says master's degree required. I believe one of the sample postings I saw from MASC somewhere it said doctorate desirable. I don't know if that's desirable for our districts or not. I don't really know why it was, but I just know that some some of the posting that I saw on MASC said master's degree required, comma doctorate desirable. I don't know if that's a if what those committee thinks about that. Does it matter? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, again, just, I'm just looking from the other posts that I saw. I'm happy to not have that in there, so. Okay, any other changes or questions on page one? On page two, at the top, show experience with the second point, show experience with facilities management and building construction issues. I know that this was, this was from our last posting, and the school was under construction at the time. Is that still or is that typically a requirement for superintendents, the school construction issues? Yes, because even if it's not just the high school, middle school, you have the you it's have kind of thing, school. Because they have. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're trying. No, seriously. Oh, okay. Because we couldn't get out of the high project at the school. Yeah. So, and I also think facility management. Right. Facility manager for sure. I just didn't know about the. If it, I didn't know if that was specific to North Reading the last time, or if that is a. And again, I don't know if somebody's going to not apply because they don't have construction, you know, oversight experience. But if that's typical, that's fine. And then the only other thing that I didn't notice specifically was the um, the plan, the NRPS plan. I want to make sure we have somebody that. I don't know if that should be a uh, strategic plan. Yeah, this is just creating a strategic plan for the district. I don't know if that should be a bullet point issue in execution. Yeah. Yeah, experience in, in, in strategic planning and, and execution. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't see that as much, and I think that's been something that, you know, Mr. Vernon, you've been very good at doing, and we follow that quite a bit. And so I think it would be very important yeah, for us. This is now, is this the second plan or the third plan? This is, the, this is the second the second year plan. And we've seen that value, so it's definitely something we're going to want. Yeah. And I don't know if other districts do that or not, and so I think that was that was one thing that looked like it was missing. Maybe uh, like 21, 22, 20. You're in an RP 
ideas 2021 lab, so we'll be in lab 2026 every school will be a new lab year, which is kind of recommended by the Yeah, and I have I would actually probably put that in one of the first three or four bullets. I think that's one of the most important things that I, I would hope for in the before facilities management and construction issues. I want to make sure they super heavy to create a strategic plan for us and execute on it. Okay. For the salary, do we want to? Is that something we discussed in the I don't know. Or? Well, it's going to be I a posting. I guess it would be. I think they want to put a range in the posting. I've seen both. Yeah. Should we discuss it in open? Oh, yeah. Or will we have to? Sure, we're going to put a range. You're not negotiating the contract. Right. And no. okay, we'll just put a range based on experience and quality. Yeah. yeah. Trying to be quick. Um, with some of the information that you had given us, and I had what Mike gave us last, um, last year for the ranges. I was looking um, to do between like 160-ish, 180. Can I ask Mr. Bernard on the list that you've provided, do you know off the top of your head which of these are recent hires? Yes, I can. So it's a good question. So if you let's can I start with North Reading? So I've got five years. Okay, I'll be easy with this. Uh, Tri Town and Triton are both in there. Uh, let's see. Triton is Triton is third year. Tri Town I believe. It's either three or four, I think it's four, year four. Rockport would be approximately, I'll say eight years, and I think I'm pretty, pretty close with that, because I was a finalist for that one. So. <laughs> um, Pantucket is new, I think this is year one, actually. Masconomic is probably about, um, it's retirement actually in June. I would say that's probably seven years or more. Linfield is the same as maybe five. Ipswich, I'm going to say year two. Georgetown's a little long, yeah, right? I'd say maybe nine, yeah. I'd like to say ten, something like that. And Hamilton went in, I would say about six. Six or seven, give or take. And I would just, I would tell you that these are base salary figures that sure. I have available to me directly from those people, from the folks that have dropped. A lot of them have other, you know, benefits attached to them, but nothing, mm -hmm. nothing crazy. But you know, there are some there's, I know that this one community has a school department national meeting. There might be like travel allowances, things, things of that nature. And, and including the post record. And do you say you say those people get better off the salary? Um, between 160 and 180. So my, my salary is July 1st. Yeah. And okay. then when, when we posted five years ago, the range was a $20,000 range from 145 to 165. Yeah. Our last John, this might be. Why those schools? Why those schools? Good question. It's, it's largely the Cape Man League. Okay. And so it's, it's just kind of, we keep our own kind of database among ourselves. It's nothing, it's nothing super scientific. It's just, you know, when we, when we negotiate our own contracts, we usually look at another community to see it. So it's just, it's a, it's a peer group. Yeah. It's largely the Cape Man League schools. It's I, I, I see a lot of both. Mm -hmm. To me, I think for the superintendent position, you know, in, in a community like this, you, you could attract people that are already in the superintendent's job. You could, you could, you could, you could, you could attract a superintendent that says, you know what, 
I, I, I'm not happy with my district, but I'm involved. You know, I'm not getting run out of town. I'm going to credit reputation. I might want to move over. And so I think for that, for those kinds of decisions, I think absent a salary range, I, I don't know if you might. Yeah, I, mean, I think they kind of need to know. Is you know, that's a consideration that they're taking to leave the superintendent post or you know, an assistant superintendent post. So I think we're. You know, I think we're competitive in North Bend, but an assistant superintendent could be, could be doing pretty well. On the flip side, are we, are we losing anyone if we cut our range too low, though, and turn anyone off? That might not, you know, be a well-established yeah. superintendent in another district that's been there for many years, but looking for a change, and the salary range is too low. Yeah, I think, I think what Mrs. Zimbriano suggested is close to what I would have recommended yeah. to you if you were to ask me. I might, have, I might have been off a little bit. I, 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 would, I would, if you would ask me, yeah. I would have said 165 20. That would have been my, my salary is going to be 181 on July 1st, 181 and change, um, with five years experience. So, I think a 160 would have been great. I think you're absolutely right. Yes, I'm sorry. Nothing changed. Oh, this is copy. It might be um, beneficial. I don't know if it's on that list. But to kind of analyze the number of staff members, um, student population, and you know, administrators that the superintendent would be you know, responsible for in the evaluation process, because I think that may affect where the salary should, should fall. It does have that information. Yeah. <clears throat> but, excuse me. Thank you. And just a follow up question Does the posting this classroom? For uh, three years of teaching, so yes. qualification is at a minimum of 10 years of education experience, including at least three years of teaching experience and three or more years of administrative and or central office experience. So for the salary, just, just to try to get this together, I think we should probably have this together. 160 to 180, 165 to 180. Okay. I think. Well, my only follow-up question would be, I, I looked at what the assistant superintendent here makes, and I think it's 145 right now, or is it 145 now? 146 right now, and it makes me 150 next year. Is that similar to what other assistant superintendent I think it's would be making? And so that's what I'm thinking, if it's an assistant superintendent who's just starting off, would 160 attract that person or not, or 165? I don't know. I mean, we, we did a twenty thousand dollar range last time, and so I would say maybe one sixty, one eighty.
know, if it's will be 286,000, I would say is 286,000 square feet. Those are just my chance. Because I think in the previous version of this, this was talking about the proposed school. Yeah, if you want to, I mean, we could work the whole paragraph a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and maybe, maybe Janine and Rich can. Yeah, so I think we have to do the meeting with the. Yeah. I'll send it to both of you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. 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 Then we can collaborate. Because it's not like it's not going to be public because we're going to be posting it. So. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be a secret. Anybody else have any comments on the posting? And the posting would be good to be other than that. Okay. And I think that's the update on the yeah. what we did. And I, don't, I think that's what we need to decide right now. Brianna is going to take those phone calls and hopefully those people are available and we get the show I think they'll probably send out an email first because yeah. it, it, that way you get the response and make sure we've got a way to contact Right, them. and if I need to reach out um, for a verbal conversation, then I'll do that. But for the most part, expect an email. And I will not be sending out a thank you for volunteering or we should volunteer however you know you didn't make the list or however nice it is to say that until I get confirmation that all of the people can do make can um, make the time commitment and if one or two can't then we'll come back and figure out who it is that we would think would be us to replace that person. And so uh, would you copy me on all of your commitments? I can. Yeah. So you're thinking about some more. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so moving on. The superintendent's evaluation. So Mr. Gowan or Mrs. Imbriano, you want to um, lead think, us through this? Why we need to do superintendent evaluation? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, well, I took the lead on it, so I'll do, uh, I guess, a presentation, and I just because there was only four of us, because Mel, when he stepped down, he did not send in um, the, the evaluation. If there was two people on coefficient and two people on um, exemplary, I pumped it to exemplary. So as I was waiting in, I've known him longer, been on the board and stuff. So I just, just to, just to fair to close. Fair to close. Well, that's Mel's um, fault. Over, uh, well, obviously he does an incredible job. We don't know that, so um, I will bore you though with some of the comments that were written about him. Mr. Bernard is exactly what school committee and the community looks for in the superintendent. He works hard, is well spoken, and cares. He is an educator and strives to continuously improve the school, not just to maintain the status quo. His vision and diligence have directly helped to improve the North Reading school system. Mr. Bernard has an incredible ability to teach and lead others to perform at their best. He has patience and calm demeanor that allows those around him to work at their best with the tasks that he delegates to them. Throughout Mr. Bernard's long list of accomplishments while serving in the District of North Reading, you will find that there is a common theme. That theme, in my opinion, is excellence. For the four standards above, you will note that 50, there was a 50-50 split, proficient to exemplary. I do feel that Mr. Bernard's exemplary performance should be recognized and therefore have weighted all of the overall performance rating as such. The goals that Mr. Bernard continuously sets out to achieve are always centered around the district's mission to provide a safe, supportive, and temporary learning environment where the dedication to excellent service and lifelong learning is paramount. I have experienced a continuous strive to expand, meet, and exceed those, those goals, such goals. Whether it's advancing digital learning programs and capabilities, establishing an informative and collaborative events such as Parents University or prototype, prioritizing, sorry, the necessary efforts to keep our school safe, Mr. Bernard never fails to meet the standards we set out for him and 
portrays a level of excellence that others could have learned from. Mr. Bernard brings a great mix of professionalism, organization, and most importantly, a commitment to the North Reading Public School System uh, school community. He provides a vision and focus that have had a tremendously positive effect on our school. Um, and that was, sorry, I should have mentioned it first. Um, that was for, yes, the old thank you. Um, the next one, not all of that one, by the way. Um, he got proficient on instructional leadership. Uh, Mr. Bernard is a great leader. He has a great administrative team to work with him to carry out the vision for the district. Mr. Bernard has put in place a team process and culture that fosters students' learning and staff professional, uh, professional development. On management and operations, overall, he got exemplary. Mr. Bernard works tirelessly across the community and district on many boards to make North Reading the town a great place to be. Mr. Bernard is detailed and diligent in his work. He is great at both creating plans and executing, ex executing them. The area which the school committee often sees is his work is with the financial system, and he, along with the administrative team, creates an excellent budget, create ex excellent budget materials each and every year. Mr. Bernard holds himself and his staff to high standards when it comes to the management and operations. And this can easily be seen through his diligent and timely efforts, impeccable organizational skills, and in all output that he puts forth to the committee, public, parents, and staff. His staff also operates at the same standard, in my opinion. Mr. Bernard's leadership has a significant impact on this consistency. Mr. Bernard brings strong organizational skills to the job and has a strong management team around him. He is extremely positive, responsive, sorry, and has a very good follow-up. Along with his team, he has perfected a very effective budget process, accumulating in, oh, 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 thank you, in budget materials and, they, and that are complete and easy to follow. And then under family and community engagement, he got exemplary. First and foremost, Mr. Bernard puts in the time necessary to engage the community. He is at nearly every school activity that is held and frequently interacts with the public at those events. In the past years, we were fortunate not to have had many or any major disputes, but he has handled issues such as busing problems, community garden placement issues well. He is well spoken and people ultimately feel heard by him. I have personally experienced other school districts, both private and public. Mr. Bernard's family and community engagement exceeds expectations. There is an appropriate level of transparency and a high level of professionalism, and this never wavers. Mr. Bernard's heavy listening compliment of compliments in this area attest to what I personally have experienced being not only a committee member, but a parent with children in the district. Mr. Bernard engages with the community very effectively. He is Okay. He's whatever that is. The presence of school events of all types, uses Twitter effectively and communicates effectively with the community through this business newsletter and then broadcast emails. He is responsive to the family concerns and responds appropriately. Mr. Bernard makes it a point to be seen across the district and to engage in the highest level of communications with the community. And last, the Under professional culture, he um, is exemplary. I have no hesitation in stating that the professional culture fostered by Mr. Bernard is exemplary. Being a new member of the committee, although I have limited experience working with other superintendents, I do have experience directly collaborating with leaders. 
and the sea suit personnel sport. Sorry. Uh, I said, who's bringing up who brings up sea suit? Have a motion to accept the April 24th open session minutes. 
I will move to accept the April 24th open session comments. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. One abstention. Four to zero passes. All right. Before you say that, it's uh, technically the open session for the budget board shop. It's not an open meeting. You know what I'm saying? That's what I said. And fiscal <laughs> year. It was what I said. Uh, uh, open session and fiscal year 20 budget work for the record. Okay, April 29th, executive session. Anybody see anything? No, but I'm not going to make a motion. That's a good decision. Okay. A motion, Mr. McGowan. I will move to uh, that we accept the uh, minutes from the April 29th, 2019 executive session. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes four to zero. And then the last one is going to be the April 29th open session. Anybody see anything off on this one? Okay, so changes. And motion. I move to accept the uh, uh, regular uh, meeting minutes from the April 29th open session. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And motion passes 4 to 0. Chair. Yes. Yes. Um, Mr. Bernard, I had someone come up to me and I, I remember um, from this, so I kind of marked this so ask you. Could you explain, um, Mr. Uh, Dr. Daly, when he was talking about the health and sexuality curriculum yes. in the fifth grade? It's shown in the fifth grade, right? Correct. And then again in the sixth grade. sixth grade. And historically, it has been that the girls see it in one room and the boys see it in the other. In grade five. Right. I can't say it's called grade six, but I was okay. definitely in grade five. It's not that bad. Okay. Um, and through whatever study or research that you found that integrating them is um, the, the approach we're going to do this year? Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, and the parents have the ability to opt out? They do. Okay. In fact, I believe some letters were out with today from the elementary schools about that. Okay. How much are they to opt out? Um, you know, as, as parents are concerned, uh, when I was showing the video that, you know, in the dinosaur days, yeah. um, we definitely saw it integrated. But where it's the first time we were ready to not have them integrated, but there's some concern and they want parents wanted to know why that decision was made. Mm -hmm. So could you just refresh my memory? Yeah. Yes. I think I think there were a couple of things. I think that over the years personnel, school personnel occurred that there were questions that Students of the Office of Gender, there was information that the students of the Office of Gender might experience as they develop that another gender should be aware of. Nursing, nursing particularly. Um, and I think it's just, it's, it's kind of what Dr. Gill was observing as the direction that communities are going with, that, that information can be beneficial to, to both gender. Um, the, the, the film itself, um, and I actually, I actually might have watched it too. Dr. Daly and Michael and I previewed the original film and the new film that we previewed more than, more than one new one. We found that the one that we had been showing was content wise really the first thing we could, which is very updated. It's just the, the clothing the children were wearing, which is just a lack of better word, it's corny. So that kind of developed a decision to present you an updated film. But the opt out provision still exists. Um, like I said, I believe two notifications are out today from the first two the elementary schools. The third one didn't want to, but I just happened to get on the other two um, for the show. But I think if anyone has a question about all the other concerns, the college that we the principal work directly to Patrick, I know he would, he would have to be involved in that conversation. We understand that it's, it's new for us. There were some questions when we did the, the, the kind of a preview meeting for the format center back a couple of weeks ago. Were ready to come. But I got the sense from him that largely, if not exclusively, the, 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 the questions were answered. But I can understand that there may still be some anxiety. There'll be, there'll be professionals, of, male and female professionals in the, 
you know, what would be fun to show you, to show you in the classroom. I think we really get to respond to questions that students might have. Is, you know, um, one of the questions that uh, Karen was wondering is, um, if, if you opt out, could you opt instead? It's not that they don't want the child to see the film, but just think that it would be highly uncomfortable for a girl mm -hmm. and a boy in the same room to be seeing the same thing at the same time. So instead of opting out because there's no other choice, but it be possible that they can opt to be gender segregated? No, I don't think we're prepared to do that. Okay. Well, it was one of the questions yeah. that was asked, and yeah, I, I think, just didn't know. Sure. So, I, I, think, I think the fear, and I'm glad you know, we're talking about this probably, I just I would, I would ask parents to contact the office, whether it's at their school or our, or our pageant or media record. I just, if we don't want, we understand, we recognize that there's, you know, the change is coming, and that with that, sometimes comes anxiety, we want to try to either eliminate or certainly reduce that for parents. But, yeah, it was, you know, I think, I, I don't want to say we're not interested in exploring other options, I just don't want to be able to say that that's an option for the other But, yeah, I think, I think certainly, what I don't want is, important information that I think a child needs to be aware of, not being made available to you. You know, that's, that defeats the whole thing. Right. So anyway, right. you know, I would certainly want to you know, at least explore what could we do to make sure that the information that we need needs to be made available to them gets available because they don't want to. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. How many parents attended this meeting? You know, I was far as involved. I, I just get the sense that it was anything on typical for what we had. It was, they check, they, they come, coincide with the, with the orientation night for grade five parents at the middle school to try and get, you know, it was larger uh, population, but I, I, I didn't tell you. I did get the sense that it was off one way or another. It was kind of Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yes. So I, I gave two updated gift memos tonight. Okay, yep. just, I just want to so the first, I think the first one is one of the ones. So you just, in the, in the larger packet, there's an update to the James Chambers. Um, oh, I see. Yes, they're, they're updating, they're not additional, they're updating. No, they're not, they're not additional, right. Well, there is no budget update, there's no staffing. So that's not saying. So it's a bit of donation. I don't know what we're talking about. Mr. McGowan, you probably need that. I will. It's two riches. Is the second one about the same as It's the first one and it's the Charlie Jones. Okay. Further. Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $50 to multiple donors for a scholarship to be given to a graduating senior to be chosen by administration in memory of James J. Chambers, husband of high school guidance secretary, Ann Chambers. Favor? Aye. Opposed? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I move that the school committee vote to accept the gratitude donation of $100 from Daniel and Melissa Driscoll to the North Reading High School baseball team. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I move that the school committee vote to accept the gratitude with total donation of $200 from Edward and Kimberly Baker to offset the cost associated with the 8th grade Washington, D.C. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I move that the school committee vote to accept the gratitude with a donation of $200 from Barbara and James Thorstad from the North Bank High School track team. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I move that the school committee vote to accept the gratitude of total donation of $275 to multiple donors to offset the costs associated with the 8th grade Washington, D.C. trip. I'm going to read the donors and I'm also going to circle back at the end to the two that I did before. Um, $200 from Edward and Kimberly Baker, $50 from Mary Pastore, $25 from Stephen and Janice Sarkin. Question? Yes. Um, is it just a coincidence that the same people donated twice? The same uh, amount? Um, Edward and Kimberly Baker? It's 
No, I think it's once. Yeah, yeah it's probably just one already. Oh, yeah, you're right. Take out the single one. Yeah. We're trying to hold it. Okay, so it's two spots. One rotation. One rotation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. No, it's how, one. How do so, we retract the single one? Because it was done already. Oh, we, we, can we just take the 200 out and change it this one to 75? 275. Yeah, exactly. Make the amendment. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, this motion hasn't been seconded, right. so he could just make the amendment. So I, I moved that uh, to uh, that we amend that we go to accept the amended uh, 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 random uh, accept the gratitude the total, total donation of seventy five dollars for multiple donors. To offset the cost associated with the 8th grade Washington DC trip, consisting of $50 American story and $25 for Stephen and Janice Sarma. Second. Okay. Although I think it's more discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Yes. Okay. Thank you. 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 Of $1,425 from various donors, friends, and family of Charles E. Jones for the Charles E. Jones Educator Award. In memory of Charles E. Jones, former middle school assistant principal. And again, I will read it. $50 from John C. Bernard. $50 from Beth Thompson. $25 from Brenda and Brian Farrow. $200 from Charles Singer. $200 from Philip and Kathleen Gardena. $25 from Brian and Cindy McNally. $25 from John and Margaret Gould. $25 from George and Joan Pellett. $100 from Ray and Sandra Mears. $25 from Kristen Moraska Cohen. $50 from Douglas and Lisa Arnold. $50 from Mary E. Reed. $50 from Samuel and Janet Foster. $200 from Anne Marie Gallo. And $350 from David and Julianne Mosseri. What a nice trip. Second. The only thing I would just say is that that was nice to do the uh, moment of silence. That's this evening, so we're not going to do that. <coughs> All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. When we get to the one that you just handed, uh, Ashley Barber is the first one to hear, so this one will be a good one. We just want to have that one. Or, did you start with this one? Yeah. Okay. So then, did you? Yeah. So I, 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 I did this one. The okay. second. You did the update. Yeah. Okay. okay. So then you did. Then you. We didn't do the first one on the on purpose. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you got that. One. Yep. Um. We're back to the parents. Eight ninety four. Yep. Uh, I voted the school committee vote to accept the gratitude of the total donation of $894 from the Batchelder Elementary School Parents Association received from art sale profit share, profit share funds to be used at principal's discretion. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. I move that the school committee vote to accept the gratitude of the donation of $1,000 for Chartwell Dining Services for a scholarship to be given to a graduating senior to be chosen by the administration. Discussion. The only thing I would just add here is I think it's great that the program that is here is also trying to be involved in the school district. So I think in chart well. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I just want to circle back to the first one I read where I did not uh, list both of the, uh, the donors. So in the donation for the James J. Chambers Scholarship, it was $25 for Ashley Barber, $25 for Jean and Harold. So thank you very much for all of you. Thank you. Very generous community. Okay, subcommittee update. <laughs> Policy subcommittee made us met on May 2nd. Bob Weller, Mr. McGowan, update. We got a little bit of waste in Section G, which is a very dense section, but uh, we, had, we, had any, we had a couple of notes that may result in uh, uh, I think there's going to be some, yeah. yeah. I think I'd bring the whole section forward when it's done. Yeah, okay. But otherwise, it's, uh, it's the process continues. Okay. I want to do subcommittees. So the schedule coming up athletic subcommittee is May 14, 2019, at 12 30, Superintendent's Conference Room. Substance Abuse Coalition is May 21st, 
21st at 10 a.m. at the police station. Norcan Board of Directors, we're going to do that May 23rd at 7 p.m. at the Norcan office. You may want to ask me how to find that place. Uh, policy subcommittee, I think I can go. Yeah. Way back behind the uh, go in and it's like way off to the right. Yeah, I, I, I was so, okay. Policy subcommittee and finance money team are to be determined. The administrative report, Bernard. Jim, thank you. So I just needed your spot on the table. Um, the report with um, two items to know the one one attachment. So I just I, as I did the little to like share with you a copy of my spring uh, 2019 newsletter, which went out across the district last week. So it's just informational purposes. <clears throat> and just a reminder um, that, um, as has been kind of a short tradition now, but something that I hope we can do is uh, we have retired staff coming in to uh, the next two school committee meetings to be recognized by the committee um, for, uh, for their service to the district. So we will bring the elementary um, staff who are able to come on the, at the June 3rd meeting. Um, a lot of the principals will be there at that meeting. Right? Those will be the amount of the best one should be able to give visitation and school approval and the elementary schools. And then on June 17th, um, something similar with, um, with the secondary level of high school staff So it's just something to look forward to. So I know that my, my wife actually said that uh, the superintendent that, that book actually sounds interesting. Wow. Oh, yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so like, you probably saw it, so there was at least one email that people, you know, know they're retiring. But several people asked me about the people who were recommendations. I didn't do For correspondence, Bernard. Or... Mr. Buckley, thank you. So just I put a clock in. This is not um, new information for most of you, but I think it's just a little bit. Uh, this is correspondence that. <clears throat> excuse me, that I received um, last week from the Department of Education regarding the uh, confirmation of the, um, the payment to the town under the um, short and relief program under Circuit Breaker. You can see that the, the district uh, is receiving $249,703. That is, it was, it was time because as I looked at the article in the transcript last week about Ms. Connelly's presentation on the budget, there was a reference to saying something about if this were not the case, then we would be having a very different conversation with you on the budget. So, the fact that, that um, we, we have, for the second year in a row, um, we are, received, are slated to receive, we will receive a substantial amount of money that we should be able to look the share is something that is noteworthy and, and has provided, will provide a great deal of relief for us in fiscal year 20. I've said it before, but it can't be understated that the work that Michael and uh, Michael Conley, the director of finance and operations, and um, Cindy Acone, as the director of student services, did to put together the, um, the portfolio to be submitted for consideration is extensive, and here we are now with nearly a quarter of a million dollars. It's going to significantly impact in a positive way our budget as of June, uh, July 1. So, so thank you, Michael, and I'll publicly thank Cindy. I thought it was important to all see that well. Questions or comments? Thank you, Michael. It was hard work. Well done. Hard work pays off, so thank you. Only question that I had was what, what number did we use in the. So we conservatively used 150. Okay. Uh, uh, the estimated, sorry, I think 100,000 um, provides an extra load of, uh, you know, buffer or contingency as we can next year. Okay. So you can do Excellent. It's good when the money people are conservative. Okay. Always. Uh, Always. Yeah, Always. Smart. Always. <laughs> For future business, June 3rd, we have a meeting uh, back at the Distance Learning Lab. June 7th is graduation, so everybody is welcome to come to that. I'll just talk to you, I guess. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Just, just for, so, for this to have a lesson to um, you're invited to come to graduation. You will receive something more formal, but I'm hoping that you will be able to come to your schedule allow it. So, several is at 615. Um, we typically can continue on uh, Main Street in the, in the middle high school around 545. Um, and we'll march down the field with, with uh, the staff and the students and, and the other members of the committee and the administration um, to, to celebrate the commencement exercises for the class of 
2019. Um, I'm just pleased I would remind you about the footwear and the notes too, but because of the turf field, you can just be mindful of a shoe that is kind of flat on the bottom so that we don't do any damage to the, uh, to the membrane of the, the turf field. We've got to have problems with just kind of I don't know to remind you. So we're, 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 taking, we're taking a sunny day, an outdoor ceremony, so. Is that your official uh, scientific event? I wish it were. You know, it's, the snow days aren't as, uh, aren't as uh, significant for me because I'm used to them being at graduation. You're always tracking the weather. Yep. Praying to the sun in the months, but uh, it's hard to believe that it's coming up. Bernard, June 10th, June 10th, we have town meeting. We're going to meet before, so that's at the uh, Performing Arts Center. We're going to meet before at 6.30 in the superintendent conference room. We'll have to go over a couple of um, more articles to take a vote on the budget and Everybody remembers we're going to be hopefully establishing a, um, a fund for special education and putting $100,000 into that, so we may need to, depending on how the conversation goes, we can get to be prepared to advocate for that if we need to. Um, yes? Question? Are we meeting, for some reason I have the time meeting to meet at 6.